when Steve Jobs passed away in 2011, it was rumored that he had attempted to use a diet of fruits and vegetables to heal his cancer. And at the time, I didn't really think much of this because I wasn't following the carnivore diet, but this thought came up in my head recently, so I decided to read his biography. And he was obsessed with a vegan diet. It's completely crazy. For those of you that don't know, Steve Jobs had pancreatic cancer, it progressed into liver cancer, he eventually had to get a liver transplant uh, after taking a lot of chemotherapy, all that stuff, uh, but eventually it spread throughout his whole body and he passed away. He was known as a lifelong experimenter with compulsive diets, focusing mainly on fruits and vegetables. The first book he was influenced by was A Diet for a Small Planet, which pushed the personal and planetary benefits of vegetarianism. This book, interestingly enough, also played a role in the advent of the USDA dietary guidelines. It reinforced his tendency to embrace extreme diets. Initially, in his freshman year of college, he was living off of cereal, dates, almonds, carrots, juices. There was even a story about him turning orange from eating so many carrots, an indicator that he isn't metabolizing carotenoids likely due to the lack of fat in his diet and the overconsumption of them. He became even more obsessive when he read Mucusless Diet Healing System. That gave him the idea that only eating fruits and starchless vegetables would prevent the body from producing mucus. He was very involved in fasting and eating leafy vegetables. During his first job at Atari, a co-worker actually complained that Steve Jobs smelled, but Jobs clung to the belief that his fruit-heavy vegetarian diet prevents both mucus and body odor. They even contemplated firing him over his smell. Coming back from an apple farm actually motivated the name behind the company. So, ironically, his diet of fruitarianism, vegetarianism, whatever you want to call it, actually gave him the idea to name the company Apple. His hygiene issues were continuously mentioned throughout his biography, though. Steve Jobs developed kidney stones in 1997, I'm assuming from his high leafy green consumption. For those of you that don't know, certain green vegetables contain high amounts of calcium oxalate, which is calcium bound to an oxalic acid molecule, and this pretty much gets stored in the kidneys and can cause kidney stones if your body doesn't have enough of certain other vitamins to excrete it. But these kidney stones actually led to him getting a scan which detected his cancer in October of 2003. Thankfully, it was detected very early, but Jobs decided not to have surgery to remove the tumor, insisting to see if a few other things would work. Um, this is in his pancreas, by the way. Uh, so he started working with a natural healing clinic in California, and even diet doctor Dean Ornish who's still alive today, a very outspoken proponent of a vegan diet. Even he insisted that he needed surgery, but Jobs decided to adhere to a strict vegan diet of fresh carrot and fruit juices, acupuncture, herbal remedies, etc. In July 2003, a CAT scan showed that the cancer had progressed, causing Jobs to face the reality and undergo surgery, removing part of his pancreas. So, he tried a vegan diet for a period of time, and his cancer progressively got worse. Unfortunately, the cancer had spread to his liver, causing Jobs to begin chemotherapy treatments. Jobs' eating disorder got worse in 2008, where he actually lost 40 pounds over the course of spring 2008. This actually caused Apple stock to drop when they saw how emaciated he looked. At this point, Jobs was very sick and in excruciating pain, going through many cancer drug therapies. He was put on the liver transplant list and was lucky enough to get a liver before it failed, but they noticed cancer spots on the membrane surrounding other internal organs when they were doing the liver transplant. Despite all of this, Steve Jobs continued to really only want to consume fruit smoothies. He had regained his strength in early 2010, coming back to Apple to work, but the cancer came back in November of 2010 eventually spreading to his bones by July 2011, and then he passed away later that year. On one hand, we could say, yes, yeah, Steve Jobs was kind of brainwashed in this vegan vegetarian ideology, and he should have undergone medical treatment. On the other hand, we know that Steve Jobs consumed a very high fructose diet, and here is a study showing that fructose intake is associated with increased risk of pancreatic and small intestinal cancers, 
Here is another study showing that cancer cells can readily metabolize fructose to increase proliferation, which is cell growth. And this study suggests that sustained fructose consumption should be curtailed as it is detrimental to long-term human health. And one final study implicating that high-carbohydrate diets increase the risk of pancreatic cancer in women. It only takes six days of excess fructose consumption to cause insulin resistance and eight weeks to allow pre-diabetes to establish. This is because fructose can only be utilized by the liver whereas glucose can be utilized by many cells in the body. What happens after decades of high fructose consumption? The result is a diabetes disaster. Precisely what, I mean, we're pretty much having in America right now. Fructose overconsumption stimulates fatty liver and leads directly to insulin resistance. Here's a study showing that excess insulin in circulation can cause progression of pancreatic cancer cells. Of course, fructose consumption isn't linked specifically to a vegan diet, although with how many vegan day of eatings I've seen. A lot of these vegans are putting 20 dates in a shake in the morning and then having acai bowls with all this fruit. So there are plenty of vegans that are obviously overloading their livers with fructose and the fruitarians are probably the worst. Like straight course to fatty liver, 100%. But there are quite a few vegans who push a diet low in fruit sugar, high in carbohydrates, and when we look at indigenous groups that consumed fairly high percentages of carbohydrates, they were still in adequate health if they prepared the grains properly. That being said, they weren't consuming fructose. So did Steve Jobs' high fructose consumption lead to pancreatic cancer? I personally believe so, and just the evidence adds up so much. He consumes all this fructose, he gets insulin resistance, uh, he has some fatty liver and just continues to do things that are damaging his pancreas and his liver and putting so much stress on those organs by continuing this crazy fruitarian diet. And can we argue that his obsession with veganism and vegetarianism ultimately led to his demise? And he was essentially the most famous person to get brainwashed into a vegan cult and die because of it. It's pretty crazy if you put this into the context of it. This guy literally died because he believed so much in a vegan diet. That's what we're seeing now. And I'm surprised Steve Jobs isn't brought up that much. I guess a lot of people haven't read his biography, but you know, these vegans are so confident in their diet. What confident to what point? Steve Jobs, I'm assuming one of the most intelligent and successful people to ever live was brainwashed into veganism and it killed him. If he is susceptible to this, then who isn't? If Steve Jobs was able to be brainwashed into a vegan diet and ultimately died because of it, then who's to say that any vegan is smart enough to understand the diet? You know, it's, it's crazy. Like what level of intelligence do you need to be aware that the brainwashing of a vegan diet and the fruits and vegetable conventional wisdom, how hard is that to see through for some people? I guess it's very difficult. Uh, but just throwing this out there, guys. Uh, to me, it makes a lot of sense. I think out of all the videos I make and a lot of things that I try to say, this actually falls in line with a lot of truth and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, is it solely because of his high fructose consumption? It could be because he's also lacking vitamins in general, uh, evident by the kidney stones. So the combination of the lack of nutrients in his vegan diet, as well as the high fructose consumption, it's very safe to say, you know, he's lacking fat soluble vitamins. He's stressing his liver. He's stressing his pancreas. And that is... I mean, if you would, if you were going to try to figure out a way to die from cancer, the only way you could speed it up is by drinking vegetable oil. So um, that's all I have to say for this, guys. So if you guys would like to support the channel, please subscribe and share the video. I will be posting the biography below. So check in the comments for the link to that PDF file. If you guys would like to check out my Amazon shop, I have a bunch of products I use in my day to day life from vitamin D3 to various salts I put on my food, on my Patreon. I have some exclusive videos uh, if you guys sign up. My hygiene products are back in stock on my website. So if you guys are interested in like fluoride free toothpaste, things like that, definitely check out my website, frank definalcom And if you guys would like to reach out to me for a one on one consultation, maybe you don't want to follow the path of Steve Jobs, you can shoot me an email, frankatefano at gmail.com, or contact me through the form on my website down below. Thank you guys for watching and uh, enjoy the rest of your week.